and the producer called me last week, said we being aired in North and South Carolina. You can't limit God. Amen. Sometimes he act like he's bigger than us, don't he? I'm thinking about, well, I'll tell you what I'm thinking about that. Thank you through praying. Father, in Jesus' name, you're so good to us. God is here on the slippery highways, helping us to pay our tuition and giving the pastor a tip. Say amen, somebody. You don't want the pastor to live here. <laughs> Lord, be good to us like you've always been. Teach us. Take us where we've never been. Give us a spirit of exploring your goodness. Give us a microphone and a microscope that we might hear and see the details of holiness and share it with joy. Do it for your glory. We'll praise you. I said we'll praise you. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I think we're teaching... We're, Talking about Revelation, the book of Revelation, the test of Revelation. I think we start on question number eight. So you got Revelation before you and a notebook and a pencil. Those of you newcomers, I will have all the tests and all the answers written out for you next week. So all these tests that we give in the others, you will have the test question and the test answers so we can go swiftly. In Revelation... <clears throat> The test on Revelation. Number eight. When, G, when John saw Jesus, what did Jesus have in his right hand? And I'm going to give the address. Amen. And here's how you answer the question. You don't say Revelation 1 and 6. That don't make no sense. You go out there to the stop sign and people out there to stop sign. Revelation 1 and 6, they're they going to call the police on you. She done blew it. So the question is, when, when John saw Jesus, what did he have in his right hand? Now, listen, I, don't, I ain't talking about, well, somebody told me, that ain't what I'm asking you. I said, give scripture, didn't I? Yeah. So you got to give me the answer and the address in the Bible where you got your answer from, and you know you're going to be right. Question eight on the Revelation test. When John saw Jesus... What did Jesus have in his right hand? Don't guess. Read. So the answer to number eight is when John saw Jesus, that's where you answer the text. When John saw Jesus, Jesus had in his right hand seven stars. And the scriptural address is Revelation 1 16. See, I got all the questions written down here, all the answers written down here. So you're going to get your PhD and ain't going to be up to a social degree yet because I'm just spoiling you. But now, there's something in college I heard before an impromptu test. One, they just jump on you. You come in there all grinning, Amen. and they give you a test. What the? Why? <laughs> <laughs> but you see, God don't work like that. God didn't organize this college to flunk you out. He organized this college to let you know he flunked the devil out. So when it comes to this college here, the devil is the only one that's flunked out. Amen. All right. Amen. Boy, they patting their hand now, ain't they? But is this scripture here, Brother Blackman, oh, no man, nothing? Why don't you pat your hand to that? It's Bible. Amen. All right. But the sister scriptures is give 
I'm living it, boy. He's working too. I just got two checks from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Woman haven't been here in almost 20 years, been paying tithes all that time. You can't hey, beat God given, no matter how you try. And on the other side of that, you can't beat God ticket. <laughs> huh? Will a man rob God? Paul said, you've robbed him. He said, what do you mean? He said, tithes and offerings. There's seven or eight kind of offerings on top of the tithes. And then God said, give. Uh, I know y'all just love it here. Give and it shall be given to you. Amen. Press down. Help me with it. Shaking together and what? Right. Running over. Shall the Lord bless your bosom, not your purse. Amen. God ain't no money God. I am. <laughs> uh, I came out here this morning at 9 o'clock and cut these funnies on, three of them. If you think you can run three funnies in these three beat rooms, including that sanctuary, all that time without money, won't work. Well, I, he haven't cut the gas off yet. How come y'all don't say amen to that? Because you see, Lord, I left my wallet in my in my other room and I lost this here thought it was my wallet I wrote it down <laughs> I'll check with you later number nine on the test of revelation and I'm taking I'm taking all the questions I'm writing them down I'm writing the answers to all the questions and I'll put it in my library with the other 500,000 documents. And I'm thinking about asking, sit right here, bro, in your own seat. All right. All right. I'm asking Dr. Altheimer to take charge of it. My son is going to go on a job where he don't have to work nights and he wants to come and help me teach. That's a good thing. Amen. Amen. Paul went to a meeting one night and the person in charge of the meeting said, if anyone have anything exaltation to say, say on. <laughs> Paul said, I got something tougher. Y'all don't know what tougher me do you ain't now, so. The other question on Revelation, test on Revelation, is number nine. What came out of Jesus' mouth? Now, don't, well, he was talking, it must be word. That ain't what I'm asking for. Give the address for number nine. Don't just give Revelation 116. Out of Jesus' mouth came a sharp, what? Two-edged, so it, the word of God, you find it in Revelation 1, 16. Out of Jesus' mouth, look at it now. Came a sharp, two-edged sword. The word of God. Now down south it says it had two edges because it cut going and coming. Y'all, it means it cut going and it's cut coming. Two-edged word. So, because that ain't Bible, but that's what they said down south. They cut going and coming. <laughs> going and coming. <laughs> Y'all don't know that kind of English. <laughs> I despise anybody in here to sit in this class and don't be happy. If you're not happy, you're in the right place, you <laughs> slew foot sad sack. The word of God. 
It's supposed to be fun. Because the joy of the Lord yeah. is what? Our strength. So you, you, can't, you can't be weak and got the word of God. I'm going to tell you something now. I'm going to throw you for a Mississippi flip. You can't be spiritually sad with the word of God. Neither. Now the word will offer you problems that will give you an intellectual weight. Shed it. It ain't going to do you now kind of good. Your hair already falling out. Why you think I got that camera looking straight at my face and don't look back? <laughs> huh? Worry will do a whole bunch. Of, look at here. Worry will make you physically sick. Why? Because when you worry, you got your mind on something that's not of God. Amen. Amen. And God sent Jesus as a soul doctor. Y'all get that? So Jesus is heaven's doctor on earth. His blood is the medicine that will save your soul and snatch you out of that despair. Well, how y'all doing? Well, it's all, it's all, oh, well, just shut up. Then he turned right around and said, Joy of the Lord is my strength. Somebody lying. Let me tell you something. If you get out of this, if you get out of this college, it's going to cost you five years. I've been teaching 62 years. But I told you last week, if you get your ticket, and get on board. Never mind how long it's going to take the train to get there. Yeah. How are you on board? Yeah. Right. Huh? Yeah. And oh, I heard this in my spirit. This is a one way trip. One train, one conductor, one destination. One song, free at last. Hey, I'm enjoying myself in here. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. Look how personal it is. I am free at last. Now, free at last means there was a time when I was not free. I know you've been free. You're born with the Holy Ghost, but I wasn't. The devil drug me through everything. If you, you ain't been down, sir. You throw a rope on a bull's neck about, he about eight months old. He gonna drag you through every thorn brush, every fence. When you get where you, you ain't got now kind of clothes on. And he gonna stand there. Whoo. I hate them bulls. I'm ministering to you not a light spirit but a spirit that will lighten your burden. Everybody in here if you're breathing got a problem somewhere. Amen. Huh? But they dumped a whole lot of junk behind the church there, and I got a three-quarter ton truck. Yes, sir. I loaded that stuff up and took it to the dump. Look at me, look at me and go like me. See, suppose you got a weight on your right shoulder. Look at me, look at me. Lean it, throw it off. Amen. Act like it, throw it off. Amen. It's real. Now, when you throw it off because it's stinking, walk away. Huh? That's the Indian word for voting. You get a problem with the cowboys, and the Indians have a problem with the white folk, 
and the government sent some crooks in there, huh, to rob the Indians. So the Indians don't like what the German was. They get up and say, I walk away. I said that to the devil so long ago. I told him. I walk away. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost led me as I laid sin down, help me with it, put my back to it, and what? Walked away. I'm going, you can't rush me. It's going to take you five years to get it done. You might as well chill out, man. I was teaching before you had your first baby in 1931. <laughs> and I wasn't born until 34. The idea is, listen to me, spread the joy. Spread the joy. I don't teach to put no weight a problem on you. This is supposed to be, and it is, an uplifting experience. Amen. But it's going to be a teaching experience, and you're going to have to be a studying experience. I will flunk. I had this so slow when I get ready to say that word flunk. Because I just got saved the other day. I will flunk you way out. Then hug you. Pray for you. Then say, well, come another five years. <laughs> what does this scripture say about what I'm talking about? It takes time to be what? Holy. Holy. Now you leaders, you pastors. Oh, have mercy on you. Oh. Good God Almighty. And if you tell anybody you're coming to school down here with Wheeler, you better duck. I ain't going to say nigga because I'm on TV. <laughs> Study. Look how, look how private it is to show yourself. Approve unto God. You better put some prayer up there. Amen. We're teaching this test on Revelation, and we we on number ten now, are we? Let's do nine over again. What came out of Jesus' mouth? Give the address. Out of Jesus' mouth came a sharp, two-edged sword. The word of God. And they said, give the address. Revelation 1.16. The test revelation, the last question, number 10. When John saw Jesus, what did he, John, do? Give address. Look how I wrote the answer because I'm trying to be intelligent. When John saw Jesus, he fell at his feet as dead. Give address. Revelation 1, 17. Let me tell you something, Tucker. Somebody wrote a song, when I see Jesus, hey man. When I see the one that died for me, amen. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Well, when John saw him, he fell down at his feet at dead. What does that mean? Flesh have no place in God's presence. Amen. Flesh got to be what? Crucified. When I see Jesus, look, what is he? A man. Because he took on flesh. Christ was in him. 
But the song implies when I saw Jesus, I said, amen. The scriptures say, when I saw Jesus, a man. Because you can't see Christ. Christ is what? A spirit. And those that worship him, help me, well, help me with it, must worship him in what? Spirit and in what? The word, which is truth. So we finish that task on Revelation. And I, I had a temptation to false feed you. I got 500,000 of these. And I just happened to look at the desk out there. And this one is called Jesus is Lord. And this is number 278 in a book I wrote. Here's the subject is, you don't have to go to heaven with hell on your back. Ain't that a good subject, preacher? Amen. You don't have to go to heaven with hell on your back. Anything you can think of, I got something written on it. Anything you can think That's a pretty good subject, ain't it? Yeah. Well, if you, now, it didn't say you don't have to go to heaven with hell on your back for no reason. Some people seem to think, and the devil seem to think, he can ride you into heaven. It ain't no way he can get back in. <clears throat> and if he's clever enough to get in your heart, you ain't going neither. Amen. Because the scriptures say only the pure what? And heart shall see what? Well, that's where God is in heaven. I would like for you to show more oh yeah, concerns for one another. You women embrace the women. Amen. You men embrace the men. When we love one another, Satan just passed the chart, confused, Think he's on the way to Chicago. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So if if there's any problem anywhere, love is the solution. Because love gave birth to grace. And only by the grace of God we is what we is. Amen. Amen. Now, I teach at a circle, so I'm going to go around and I'm going to teach what I taught you last week. If it's I can find it. I write everything I hear, I write it down. So check your notes that I gave you a week or two ago <clears throat> on these sayings. A new one that I just added. You can't lead where you don't go. Amen. Write it down. You can't lead where you don't go. You can't teach what you don't know. You can't lead where you don't go. You can't teach what you don't know. Now, you can lead a sheep, but you ain't going to lead no goat nowhere. 
and you don't want to be in front of a goat. He'll do a job on your rear part. You got to drive a goat. You can't drive sheep. Sheep will only follow. We are liking this sheeps in God's pasture. <clears throat> and Jesus is our shepherd. And Jesus have a staff and a rod. I don't think I'll tell you what that means. She said out, seek what is the meaning of the staff and what's the meaning of the rod that Jesus have for his sheep. I'm going to stop giving you everything. Yeah, you be sitting around here, yeah, yeah. Then when I give you a test, what that mean? <laughs> you just getting fat. <laughs> that statement was, you can't lead where you don't go. You know that's right. And you can't teach what you don't know. When you try to teach what you don't know, here's how it come out. Well, uh, I don't know, but somebody know. Yeah, yeah. Hey. You, you heard it before? And that, throw, it, throw his coat off him. Somebody put it. You seen it? That's James Brown. That's all that is. James Brown. Entertainment. No place. He called my shataha. In God's house. For entertainment. No place in God's church for flesh exaltation. Amen. No place for it. Amen. Self, write it down. I'm going to write it down. Self cannot be saved. It must be slain. Amen. I'm teaching leaders now. I'm going to get you to the book in a minute. I'm going to teach you starting at uh, Matthew 5 when I get through. Self. You, get, you need to get this, boy. Self cannot be saved. It must be slain. Pastors, think of that. Next time you have your next business meeting. I'm telling James, my son, Mike, and the rest of the preachers here. If you ever have a business meeting here, I'm going to come out of that grave and slap your face. What does the Bible say? As men as a lead, what? By the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. You going to lead the leader? Well, they done it. Amen. You got 2,000 members. You got vote power. You send to Atlanta, get you a preacher. Because you don't know nobody here. All he can do is have one vote. Yeah. Well, I vote that you, that you pay the pocket lot and put yellow lines out there. They say, you are the eye and I don't have it. No, hey, uh -huh. if you want to hear from God, pray. Yes. Pray. Yes. When you pray, don't beg. Amen. When you pray, don't dictate. When you pray, seek God's will and wait. Because God ain't in no hurry. He wasn't born yesterday. Some good things I'm teaching you. Amen. So you got a church with a thousand members. And you vote to change the light bulb in the sanctuary. And 750 said don't change it. What's the difference? 350. Other 350 said, change it. The light bulb sitting up there looking at you. No wonder you're in the dark. <laughs> the 
the church is no place for praise dancers that practiced. You're you going to come on Saturday. Oh, Lord Jesus. And practice a dance that you're going to dance tomorrow. That's what I need to do with the band. Said that I had rehearsal on Saturday morning, Saturday night. I played those songs that we rehearsed. But that's the way the devil does his business. And you can sense how the devil does his business. He'll, he'll give you the same thing over and over and over. You think you something you down there with that nigga. Understand. Don't be offended by the offender. The devil come to steal. Amen. Now the first thing he want to steal is your joy. Because the joy of the Lord is what? Strength. Your strength. So if he take your joy, he got your weak, he'll pop you. Amen. Amen. Another thing he'd like to give you too. You ain't never seen nobody point that. Look at black, but that ain't the way you. And there's another finger that tells you what you think about the pastor. Huh? How come that looks? That's just another finger. It's the application. Amen. Call me 810-423-2433 and I'll put a finger up to you. Get knowledge. Amen. Amen. What else you get? Wisdom. wisdom. And in all you're getting, so there's knowledge and wisdom, you give you a whole lot of stuff. But in all you're getting, what? Get an understanding. What is understanding? God is good and that my soul know. What? Right. You gotta praise God. Now yeah. man finishing college. I'm 81 in May. I might not be here when you finish. My son will be here. And my son, son, so you better study. Because you'll be here four generations. I'll be playing that violin at him. You still be trying to find out what Matthew is. <laughs> the devil got no place in here. How come? The joy of the Lord's here. Now, I can't say the devil ain't here because you're here. Because we ain't buying none. But I read in the book, Cash Your Care <sighs> Upon the Lord, for he care for you. And the scriptures say, in all of your ways, it didn't say holy ways. It didn't say sinful ways. He said, in all of your ways, acknowledge God. And what will he do? He'll direct your path. You better ask God what foot to put down next. You might be putting it on a snake. Say it on somebody. Amen. Black man went out here, weak for a lad, fell on the ice. I came to work Sunday and stumbled and I knew to put my head toward the door. So just before I went down, I caught a hold of that. I said, you talking about praying. Amen. I just had two words. Thank you. Thank you. I don't need to break these old bones, man. Amen. Amen. When I've been in my they ain't able to get up and I catch a hold of something. Now, don't sing this song. I've been in this storm too long. Don't you sing that line here. The storm here in the heart ain't going to cease till you hear God say, come up here. Lord, have mercy on that day. Oh. No more storm, no more pain, no more sickness, no more people calling you out of your name, no more welfare, no more gas bill, no more light yeah. bill, no more water bill. How oh, come? I'm up out of here now. You be saying, the joy of the Lord. <laughs> Keep joy with you. Drive sadness from you. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write that down. Keep joy with you. 
What does that say? Drives sadness. From you. That's the power of joy. Because joy is the opposite to sadness. Just like strength is the opposite to weakness. Truth is the optic to lie. Truth will expose, you need to get this. Truth will expose any liar. I'm going to write that down too. Truth will expose any liar. Now, I'm going to go slow. You're going to put this in your archive. You're going to teach it to your children and your children, children. Now, I want you to read your assignment on that board there. It's on the board there. You got your books. Don't just read it. Read it and reread it and reread it. Read it till you enjoy reading or just don't show up here next Tuesday. I don't need no sad sacks in here. Amen. All right. Amen. Anybody be sad here, I got the right to be sad. <laughs> I repent. <laughs> Going all over now. You can't lead where you don't go. I told you this before. You can't teach what you don't know. That's what you hear on these radio and television. Ain't nobody saying nothing about nothing. Till it come to money. They talk about money 57 and a half minutes and then for two and a half minutes they preach the gospel. Beggars. Not here. I figure if you love God you're going to pay your tuition. I figure if you don't love God I'll pay your tuition till you love God. Never alone, dear. Two checks from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in my office right now. From Cheryl Strutter. She has been here in years. Still paying her tithes. God working, Mr. Stephen Como Shata. God works. You can put a period there. In mysterious ways, it's wonders to perform. You can't lead where you don't go. You can't teach what you don't know. Self cannot be saved. It must be slain. Keep joy keep joy Keep joy with you. And sadness from you. Keep joy with you and drive sadness from you. If you've got to drive it from you, somebody's trying to feed it to you. That's the work of the devil. But you never seen sadness walk on joy. See, sadness is the devil's trick. Joy is God's power. And you can't trick that power. What I want to do as your teacher, I want to influence your life. I want you to take from this room with you the joy that we got home with you. And loose it in the home. Now I tell you how to make a hell raise and sinner shut their mouth. Don't talk. Oh, you think it's too good to talk, huh? 
Yes. I'm out of here. Bam. Silence just drove that devil from your home. Now, there ain't no home in here that ain't got no hell in it. You can stop that lie. Amen. I ain't talking about the husband, the wife, the children. You got some nephews, uncles, yep. pit bull if you don't feed him, he'll bite you. <laughs> the family means the structure. But there's one family that got no confusion in it. The family of what? God. There's one family <clears throat> that is not weak, the family of God, because the joy of God strengthened the family of God. You can't go to a sinner with a sad spirit and preach gospel. Blabbing went down there and fella ain't even American. God ain't even Christ. His God ain't Christ. But look what he did. He recognized the Jesus in black man. Amen. Listen, you can't hide. You can't hide. Hey, you can't hide. <laughs> so, the last statement I said, truth will expose any lie. I don't know if you wrote this one down last time or not, but I'm going to give it to you. When you enter into a conversation with a fool, you become one. That's a good statement there, boy. And since you come into school here... <coughs> And they know what the school teach. They're going to try to pick you into a conversation. Hush your mouth. And tell them what Jesus told him. Come see. Come see. <laughs> Come. I don't know what you're doing down there with that. Huh? <clears throat> Which means they know why you are here. And they know why you're not there no more. So just by questioning it, you can assume the answer. Oh, you down there with that? Whenever they call me out of my name, they've heard me. And you listen to a devil. You ain't listen to no man. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. Are you listening to me? So don't be hurt. Because a healer lives in you. What's his name? What's his name? Jesus. That's where they go in them, them basketball and football game. You're in the midcourt and you got three seconds. And that son, I got that ball. And it's in the, they, can't ring, they can't ring the bell till that, till that ball go out or in that hoop. When they go through that hoop, you need cotton for your ear. That's only a piece of leather. Full of air. Now I wonder. <laughs> huh? I wonder is that full of air? And when he, yeah, ho, oh, 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 ho, you don't hear me. <laughs> well, when I was young, <laughs> I'd be saying it's amazing, God, let you get old. But that same Jesus we got, love him just like he loved us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory to God. And even when it come to us, Jesus said, judge ye not one another. Amen. Jesus said, I judge no man. That's John 8. Not that doesn't mean ain't nobody judging you. Jesus came to pay the debt for what God had charged us with. Sin. 
And he give an international invitation. Come unto me. What's that next word? Oh, oh. you let labor in a heavy laden. What I do for you? I give you rest. My yoke is easy. And my burden is it's like, look what you get when you come to Jesus. A yoke. Now, you know I'm down south, so you, know, you don't know what a yoke is. You cut a tree, and they got a thing like that. And you put it around the cow's neck, and you tie it around her neck. So when she gets to the fence, she try to push, and that yoke won't let her get out. Here it is. Yeah. Look, the scriptures say, true yoke fellows. <laughs> huh? Did he say it? He didn't say yoke fellows. True yoke fellows. Because somehow or another, some of them old cows, they have managed to get through that fence, yoke or not. There is no spirit that drives you to heaven. The scripture say, as many as are led, help me with it, by the Spirit of God, they are the Son. sons of God. We are being led tonight. Amen. Now, if you want to see my theological training, I just take you out in deep water and leave you out there. Without a paddle, without a skiff, and without a balloon with air in it. I can see you now. Help! <laughs> My Bible say, the way is so plain. Help me with it. Even a fool need not help. So then why is the teacher going to try to make it complicated? I know the answer. Because he don't know the way. Because the way is straight and it's narrow. It, it, it's single. You can't get your boyfriend in there with, with huh? I know a lady one time wore, wore uh, uh, false hips. I called her aside. I said, oh, I sure hope Jesus don't come. Because some parts of you ain't going to be able to. Look at you with your coward self. Yeah. The scripture says, I'm going to lay down my false hips. Down by. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing false. Going to get in. Only the pure and hard. Are y'all listening to me? I'm teaching you holiness now. Only those with a pure heart is going to see the Lord. So my last statement was when you enter into a conversation with a fool you become one. You can check this in your notes. The holes in Jesus' hands show that the content of his heart. The holes. In Jesus' hands. Show that the contents Of his heart. Write down St. John 3.16 there. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believe in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. <clears throat> Another statement. I don't know if this is new or not. Check it. I'm talking to the leaders now. Get people out of their pity zone into their praise zone, their prayer zone. 
get people out of their pity zone. Now, the opposite to pity is joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Get people out of their pity zone into their praise zone, their prayer zone. I'm acting like I'm teaching teachers. If you were ordinary students, I'd be in the book. I am in the book. Get people out of their pity zone into their praise zone, their prayer zone. Another statement. The name of Jesus is a devil chaser. <clears throat> the name of Jesus is a devil chaser. <clears throat> the name of Jesus is a devil chaser. This is why I give you joy when I teach. The next statement say, you can't learn with the spirit of frustration. You can't learn with the spirit of frustration. What, learn what I'm saying? What, what you said to what? No, sir. Slow down. I told you about lady had nine boys. And she cooked a meal and only had 10 biscuits. And they were eating fast. He said, don't, don't eat fat like that. Slow down. And I told you the lightning flash and the lights went off. And you heard a sound. Ah! Nine forks in the back of that hand. Trying to get that last biscuit. <laughs> I said, the name of Jesus is the devil chaser. You can't learn with the spirit of frustration, so I have to slow down. I can look in your face and tell when I'm going too fast. I've been teaching before you graduated high school in 1914. <clears throat> you can't learn with the spirit of frustration. I've been there. I've been there. Another statement, you can't learn with a spirit of anxiety, neither. You can't learn with a spirit of anxiety. You can hear it, you can write it down, but it didn't go in your spirit because anxiety is a blockage. You can't learn with a spirit of anxiety. Saints don't have no anxiety. None. You can't learn with a spirit of anxiety. Next statement. Anxiety is a child of frustration. Anxiety is a child of frustration. The lack of faith. Anxiety is a child of frustration. The lack of faith. Here's one you got to think about now. Salvation is a can opener. Salvation is a can opener. Scripture, I can do all things through Christ that strength in me. So salvation is a can opener. Salvation is an eye pressing. Salvation is an eye pressing. I press the water mark of the calling. It's all this is scripture. Amen. Salvation is an eye pressing. Here's what God told me. Bro Wheeler, sow the seed. Don't judge the soil. 
<laughs> if this ain't good stuff, my name ain't Jimmy, brother. Amen. But Wheeler, sow the seed. Don't judge the soil. Amen. Mister, if we could just get half of that. Amen. Huh? And he called me by my name, bro, Wheeler. It's all right to be a brother to Christ, ain't it? Amen. Bro, Wheeler. Sow the seed. Don't judge the soil. Lord have mercy, pastors. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You, you can't dream up on this stuff here. I wish I was that smart. I'd be walking on air up in here. Oh. Bro Wheeler, sow the seed. Don't judge the soil. You catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. You've heard that all your life. Catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. <laughs> Ten ounce of provisions weighs more than a pound of cure. Ten ounce of provisions weighs more than a pound of cure. Have you ever heard folks say, if I had only too late, sow the wrong seed, dig it up, throw it away, plant the word. God is blessed, and we are too. Amen. God is blessed, and we are too. The last statement I made was, 10 ounces of prevention is way more than a pound of cure. <clears throat> you might have this in your notes. Salvation is not a force. It's a lure. Like you go fishing, it's a lure. Salvation is not a force. It's a lure. Salvation is a spiritual enlightening. Salvation is a spiritual enlightening. Salvation it's a spiritual enlightening. This is good here. Love is the best rebuke because love never what? Never fails. Love is the best rebuke because love never fails. All these statements are scriptures, you know. So you can look at these statements and put the scriptures next to them. <clears throat> the next statement is, salvation is in I press. Salvation is in I press. Scripture toward the mark of the calling of the high Lord, high calling of God. You can put scripture to every statement I say. Salvation is an I pressing. Next statement. Good leadership plus good fellowship makes good fellowship. Good leadership plus good fellowship 
makes good fellowship. All of these are scriptures. The last statement. The holes in Jesus' hand show the content of his heart. John 3.16 God so loved the world. If Jesus hadn't bled we would be dead. I'm writing that down. <laughs> if Jesus hadn't bled, we all would be dead. <clears throat> when you have questions in your notes, don't be afraid to share it with your neighbor. So what did he say when he said this? Or what did he mean when he said this? Now I'll be teaching these things from over and over and over and over. Here's a good one that I've already said. When you enter into a conversation with a fool, you become one. Right. A fool have more conversation than salvation. You see how these things come? They just don't drop out of the air, man. God be talking. A fool have more conversation <laughs> huh? than salvation. That is, a fool can talk all day about nothing. <laughs> huh? But we got a statement. If you want me to heed it, what? Read it. Read it. If you want me to tote it, quote it. If you don't know, don't show it. Don't say the other the part. Because we on TV. We can't say, shut up your hell by mouth. We on TV. We're going to be teaching now for the rest of the hour. A subject entitled deliverance. And we're going to start in the Bible at Matthew 5. Matthew 5. And you're going to see in Matthew 5 the word and which implies you should go back now to Matthew 4, Matthew 3, Matthew 2, Matthew 1. But you're in that Genesis we don't have but two hours to teach. So we are going to read in the Bible, the B-I-B-L-A. Did you know they are trying desperately to change or outlaw this book? That would be impossible. It's in our heart. You can't outlaw what's in my heart. Amen. The subject now is deliverance and you can put anything in the blank that you want to. The eyesight of Jesus. 
Matthew 5, and seeing the mother too, he, Jesus, went up into a mountain. Your voice will carry higher if you're up high. You know why? Because the air is light the higher you go up. Matthew 5, take the notes if you want to. Just write down what comes to your spirit. And seeing the mother too, he went up into a mountain and when he was set, his disciples came to him. What did disciples do when Jesus went up into the mountain? They came to him. They followed him. So who is the leader? Jesus. Now if he's the same yesterday and day and forevermore, who's the leader today? Jesus. Then why are we going to follow all this foolishness? When I take my wife to dinner, they, they be acting like I'm a 70 foot snake. They, they, they be yeah, talking and enjoy. Ha ha ha. Now that takes my appetite away. So I'm a McDonald's man now. Or I go outside of the city. But I got Bible for it. Come out. What? Thus said the Lord. But when I get out of the pulpit, I'm sweaty. I'm tired. I don't want to drive 30 miles to get a hamburger. My wife fixed me something on Saturday night and give it to me on Sunday. Matthew 5, deliverance is our subject. And seeing the mother too, he went up into the mountain and when he was set, his disciples came to him. Now you need to get that Matthew 5 and 2. And Jesus Open his mouth. Read the rest of it. And talk them. What did he do? Talk them. And what he taught them is what he said. Saying, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those that don't go around speaking in tongues, standing on their left ear. Look at me. I'm standing on my left ear. I don't know my right eye from my left. You sure don't. Matthew 5 and 3, Jesus said, Blessed, you need to get this church. Who is blessed? Blessed are the poor in spirit, the one that don't have their own Holy Ghost. Amen. Holy Ghost bankrupt. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, righteousness, peace, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Blessed are they. You need to get this. Because if you live in the flesh that I live in, you're going to moan sometimes. And I, I was practicing one day, you know. I, I said, oh. God said, I heard you. I said, I didn't say that. <laughs> he can hear your thought. Yes, sir. He can hear your thought. So I don't care what you think. It's stunk. Look at you with your jive self. I'm the one on TV. <laughs> if it ain't right, wrong. If it ain't sweet, it stinks. Oh, taste and see that the Lamo Como Shataha. The Lord is what? Good. His mercy. What? Endures for how long? Forever. You can't never move out of God's mercy. I don't care what sin you get in. I read in the book he went to hell. And souls following him up out of hell. Jesus, I'm not available. 
He put a good fellow to have on your side. Know what I'm saying? But he's better in your heart than by your side. When I see Jesus, amen. When I see the one that died for me, amen. <laughs> then the scripture say, amen, amen, amen. People don't sing. They say, ooh, boo, boo, boo. Take that to Jane Brown Church or something. Holiness is the way. I don't care what you call yourself. You can't make the Bible a lie. And I find out people call themselves something. They got to be different to get a tax exempt from Lansing. Amen. So we call ourselves the full gospel Christian church. That's not the name of the church. Amen. The name of the church is the church of God. Amen. Amen. Its location is in what? Christ. That's where the church lives in Christ. Well, that's where we are. Amen. We ain't going to argue about that. So you call yourself the church of the black eyed peas. Well, don't let me get some hot water. I'll cook your tail. The law does that. If you call yourself Baptist over here and go down there to get a permit to have a church and call yourself Baptist, you got to take something from it or add something to it. Because they got a number on that word Baptist. Yep. They got a number on the word Church of God in Christ. They got a number on the word the full gospel Christian church. How come? They're watching you. Yeah. And you have to get a permit. Amen. You got to get a permit from the government to name your church. But then as a benefit, they won't charge your taxes. Hmm? So don't, don't take your 17 airplanes down there now. You, you got too many jets. There are always people. There's always people that are going to misuse the things of God. Amen. The devil going to always have a group of people to come against God's children. Let me tell you something with your job self. Stop crying. Amen. Praise. Stop crying. Amen. The, the scripture don't say the cries of the saints, does it? He said, what? The joy of the Lord.
Truth is God. So love the truth of God never fail. We are reading in Matthew 5 on the subject deliverance. And we in Matthew 5 and 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, don't have their own Holy Ghost, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that moan, look, for they shall be what? Comforted. Comforted is the work of the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost is called the what? Comforter. So when you moan, expect, accept, expect a visitation from the Holy Ghost. He's a lifter of the moaning. Matthew 5, 5. Blessed are the meek, Lord, have mercy on my soul. Now, if that anybody or the practice being meek is the apostles, prophet, evangelist, pastors, and teaching, and teachers. Now, if you have to practice being meek, you ain't called. Because meek is a purity. And the Bible is the only the pure in heart. You know what? See, God, you better get right. Ain't no position in the church. Ain't no position in God's church. Amen. I'm an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teaching. I resist all the other four for that one. Teach, 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 teach. And God told me one day, when are you going to loose me, preacher? I act like I was dumb. I always act like I'm dumb. <laughs> and I had the nerve to ask God, what do you mean? God didn't say nothing to me. He said to me in Ephesians 1, You don't come behind me in no gift. I heard him say it, and he gave me the address. So if you want me to heed it, I got to do what? I got to read it. I'm trained like that. God didn't say it. I don't want to hear it. People come to me. They always trying to puff. I'm already puffed up, so now I ain't got no hair on my head. Oh, fa -da -na -na -na. I think the Lord is saying. I said, you, you, you think? <laughs> Don't you put your line hand on me. Yeah. <laughs> huh? I get all kind of line prophecies, man. You know why? I'm set on the straight and the narrow. Now, any thought of any lie will cause me to backslide. That's how sensitive my spirit is to the word of God. If you can't read it, I don't have to heed it. If you ain't quote it, I won't tell it. What I'm saying to you, I am what you are, special. Amen. And I know you're special because you're here. And some of y'all have been here for 10 or 15 years you've been here. Amen. Now that's enough time for me to get on anybody's nerves. <laughs> huh? But the bottom line, I love Jesus and Jesus loved me. Amen. Can't do nothing with that. Amen. Can't do nothing with that. Those apostles, they were sold out unto death. They killed every one of them but one and took that one and put him in a big old container of boiled oil and it didn't even blister. 
So God said, now, nah, I want to let you know if I had a mind to. <laughs> huh? He said to the world, touch not my anointing and do my prophet. No, don't, don't, don't hurt my people. I live on that. I live on that. So when I was stumbling, falling on the eyes last Sunday, I fell toward the door. And caught on to the door. Two words came out. Thank you. Then I went in my office and closed the door. Thank you. Hey, thank you. I ain't ashamed to tell God thank you neither. I don't care how I was looking, how I sound. That's my business. You praise him your way. And I'm praising mine. And we see who come out winner at the finish line. Only praise is going to get through them gates, brother. You ain't taking no complaint in there, preacher. Take the complaint. Nail them to the cross. Nail them to the cross, preacher. Yeah, the gas bill is going to get cut off. Yeah, the water bill is going to get cut off. Yeah, they keep in preaching the, the price of water. When things increase, my joy increase. Yes, sir. No matter what it is, the joy of the Lord is my strength against that other stuff. Amen. I'll tell you, I got two checks in there from Pennsylvania. Woman ain't been here in 15 years or more. On one of these statements here, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. God said, Bro Wheeler, sow the seed. Don't judge the soil. That's a good statement, isn't it, preacher. Sow the seed. That's what I'm doing now. You're the soil. This is the seed. I'm sowing it. Now, if you don't let it grow, that's your problem. It's all for me. It's all for me because I ain't tell you now kind of lie. God is still good. And he's still the best thing that ever happened to us right here, right now. He is ever God. And I don't care if they don't sound like no Bible college. I don't know how a Bible college is supposed to sound. I don't know about no Bible college. <laughs> I do know what I teach you. You can go to the University of Michigan. You will not hear it. You go to Princeton. You will not hear it. You can go to Michigan State, you will not heal it, hear it, and you will not feel this power. Amen. How come? We're just simple folk. Amen. Hey! We're just simple folk. Amen. God is good, and let my soul know what? Right where? I'm going to say that. <laughs> and new people be coming out looking at all them degrees. Up. Boy, boy, you can die by degrees too. My joy is God's pleasure with me. I'm going to write it down. My joy is God's pleasure with me. I heard a scripture. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Mm. Hey! Yes, sir. It pleased the Lord God to bruise. The Lord Jesus for my sins.
So if you had to get a check from God, it must be signed, this person pleased to God. One person in the Bible, God sent him a message. You're going to die and you sure enough ain't going to live. Ain't that in the book? He turned his face to the wall. He didn't call no church business meeting. He didn't call for the elders. He turned his face to the wall. He didn't ask God for no time. Hey, uh -huh. He said, Lord, you know how I live before you. That's all he said. That's all he said! My Baba said God gave him 15 years, but you ain't going to go in there and find it. He stopped at 15. Because a day in God's sight is like a thousand years. So we can't measure God's blessings. In sun-dried times and diverse manners, God works everything out for our benefit. <clears throat> we have to keep this in mind and stop being so smart. We are inside the body of Christ right now. To the extent the Bible say we are the body of Christ right now. Amen. Amen. Now look what it means and understand it teachers. If we are the body of Christ, Christ is the spirit, the spirit lives in us. So that scripture means we are sanctified. Amen. Hey! We are, we are sanctified. Now it is utterly impossible to be sanctified without being glorified. Joy is a word that is more than a word. Because the scripture said the joy of the Lord is my strength. So joy is the strength of the Lord. How come time goes so fast? I ain't even got but five verses covered here. But another scripture said, Jesus said, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Genesis 1, in the beginning, God. The last word in Revelation 22, a man. I know you've been reading it, amen. No, sir. Jesus Christ is saying, yesterday, Today what? And forever. I'm going to read me some more of this meat. Fifth verse in Matthew 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Read it. For they shall be filled with what? Righteousness. Because that's what they're thirsting for. Instead of you show yourself approved unto the Lord, a workman have no need to be ashamed. Write the divide in the word of truth. The seventh verse. Blessed are the Lord that is. Matthew 5, 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain the mercy that they are. So if you don't got no mercy, God ain't going to give you no mercy. He will give you Jesus. And Jesus will deposit his blood on Calvary. And from that blood, mercy will flow. Yes, sir. 
Mercy. Mercy will flow. I am going to act like this phone ain't ringing because I'm going to open it up and close it up. Now that just happened to be my wife. When I'm ministering, nothing interferes with me. Amen. Nothing to nobody. Amen. Now I'm looking for the itinerary. Here, here, right here. See if I got some names on here. One name. And I can't read it. Dr. Michael Cronin is on channel 17. What time, Mike? Uh, 4.30 to 5.30 on Friday. 4.30 to 5.30 on Friday. What, what night are you on, Sister Althimer? Saturdays at 5 to 6. 5 to 6 Saturday, Dr. Althimer. What You're on Thursday from 7 to 8, aren't you? I'm on 24-7. 24-7. She got you covered, man. Amen. With them words called Tweeter and Tweeter Weed Eating. All that kind of stuff. I, I, I ain't even caught up with that stuff yet. Well, they can look anywhere and see anything, man. <laughs> huh? Faithful. The Lord said, be ye faithful until Tweeter. No. Be ye faithful until death. Look at it now. And at that time, you ain't going to get that crown till you're faithful until the last breath leave you then Jesus is going to crown your soul with glory and majesty and power and meekness and love so long suffering and peace in a crown in heaven. The full gospel of Christian church ministry on channel 17 Sunday from 8 to 10 a.m. Monday from 10 to 12 noon. Wednesday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Wednesday from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Thursday from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. Saturday again from 7 to 8 p.m. How come I'm on so much? I've been here. Look at here. I paid my dues. I said I paid my dues. 